A friend of mine got in touch with me and said his neighbor had an old Honda Trail 90 that hadn't been started in over 15 years. She was ready to sell it and he knew that I like to work on that type of machine so he asked me if I'd be interested in the motorcycle. Initially I was a little bit hesitant because we completely went through a Trail 90 a few years ago. You are not that hesitant. But two things convinced me to check out the motorcycle. First of all, the story is a classic one. Motorcycle in a shed, hasn't been started in almost two decades, it captures my imagination. And second of all, my dad likes Trail 90s and he's interested in getting one. So we went down there, visited with my old friend, ate a nice Chinese lunch, met with the neighbor, I looked at the motorcycle and eventually popped on it for $700. Why don't you turn around here, see if the people think I got my money's worth based on first impressions. 1970, Trail 90, all original with the exception of possibly one of the brake levers. This one looks like it has a bigger ball on the end than the left. I believe it only has 1,065 miles and based on some paperwork I got with the machine only 14 of those miles have been put on the bike since 2003 so less than a mile a year for the past 20 years. I don't remember if it turns over or not. I imagine I tried it when we bought the motorcycle but I don't remember if it turns over or if it has compression. I feel like you tried and you didn't get anywhere with it. I don't know if that's true or not, but I feel like you couldn't determine if it had compression. Well, shall we see now? Yes. Or talk about it some more. Oh. Huh. Here we go. Compression. Ooh, but the clutch slips inside. My heart leapt a little bit when it thump thumped, but the way these Kickstarters work is that the force from the Kickstarter goes through the clutch and then to the engine. So if the clutch is slipping, it won't turn the engine over, which is what happened a moment ago. Did you notice that when I pushed it down a couple of those times, the engine didn't turn? Yes. So the engine isn't froze up. It has compression. And not even I can ruin a clutch in 1,000 miles. No, maybe it's just dry because the oil has been sitting at a certain level and not circulating to the mechanisms that need it. So what's the first step? Let's start off with the oil. See if it even has any in here. Brand new. Just like honey. Not bad. So oil is good. Should we just see if it sparks? Sure. Just for fun? Ooh, the spark plug is loose, which means the last time somebody touched this motorcycle, they weren't turning it off after a nice ride, but probably trying to figure out why it didn't start. Put that there. Maybe it fixed itself in storage though. I need the key to turn on the ignition. Have a look at this key. That looks like the key to a 1,000 mile motorcycle. <laughs> Don't you agree? Nice. Just for comparison, on my other Trail 90, the key shows oh. <laughs> signs of use. This machine is very similar to the one we just picked up, or was very similar when it was new. Since then, we've upgraded to the saucepan headlight and I installed a 125 three-wheeler engine in place of the original 90. Let's see if this key works. The engine wasn't froze up. Let's see if the ignition cylinder is. 
It works. Is it going to spark too? I don't know. Let's see. Contact. I know see Sparky. I'm really not surprised that it doesn't spark. These motorcycles need a battery to run reliably. If it doesn't have a battery, sometimes it'll run, sometimes it won't. Ooh, so glue isn't strong enough to fix this knob when it falls off. <laughs> the battery's underneath here. I guess more specifically, it needs a charged battery to run reliably. There is a battery in here. Does it have fluid in it? Yeah, there's still some in there. I'll take this out because I can't imagine it still works. Just completely discharging one of these batteries can ruin it. And this thing's probably been zeroed out for years. Oh, is that a tool pouch? Look at this. Cute little pliers, extra spark plug. It's all there. Very nice. All right, here's the old battery, and I already have a replacement for it that I bought preemptively just a few days after we got the motorcycle. Look at you feeling flush. Well, I figured it was inevitable. You got the juice? Got the juice. The battery comes dry, so we need to Put this in it. Will that take it all? I don't think so. Ooh. Got the battery filled up. Let's see if there's any voltage in it. I'm not sure if these come charged from the factory. I feel like you should have done that with the first battery. 5.27. So it has a weak charge. It's a six volt battery. We'll try it with the other one. This is the most robust battery in the world, if it still has a charge. Flat line. Or almost flat line. 0 0.01. Yeah. All right, I got the new battery in. A mystery has occurred, though. I don't know what this box is. And why are you smiling? It doesn't sound like me. There's no way I could have rolled this in here and not notice a cardboard box. I don't think it even would roll. No. Hmm. I didn't mention the tires hold air. That's positive. We put air in the tires so we could push it around and it's all still in there. Maybe you should inquire now that you've noticed it. <laughs> what? You've been reading the comments. <laughs> in the last video about Bieber, in passing, I mentioned that I used a Phillips screwdriver on a screw that looks like this. And many people told me that this is not a Phillips screw. It's a Japanese industry standard screw. How did you do that so quickly? I'm quick. There's a three, and a two, and a one. Looks like a Phillips to me. It's a Japanese industrial standard. <laughs> You're incredible. Huh? Thank you. By the way, that's your Valentine's Day present. You did the video sooner than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if it sparks now. Oh, I missed it. Did it go? I think it did. I didn't see. I think I was it did. Peeping over the camera. Do it again. Woo! Not that Ooh. time. Not that time either. Maybe I'm just not getting a good electrical connection to the cylinder head. No. No. Oh. So it had two sparks in it. And then it gave up. I wonder if we need to clean the points. This has point style ignition, a little switch that opens and closes to make the spark plug spark. Have you seen some of the screws on this? It looks like I loosened that. They probably weren't using their Japanese industry standard 
screwdriver. <laughs> So I think what we need to do now is get to the point. Let's see. Let's see, tell me. Feels pretty tight. Feels like it's meant to go there. That's what every man wants. Right. It's hard to beat a good screwdriver to screw interface. So there's the points. It's really clean in here. And they move smoothly. Sometimes underneath these covers, it's a complete flourishment of rust. This is wonderful. To clean these, I'll use a piece of paper with alcohol on it. A little bit of grime on there. Your meaty sausage fingers are in front of the camera. Did you see that spark? I think I did! <gasps> I think that means they're working. Shot of compressed air, just for good measure. I wonder how charged the battery even is. Let's see if the horn works. Ooh. That's the horn. That's depressing. I wonder if the reason spark plug only sparks sometimes is because the battery's dead. We'll try it once more. Now that we know the points are clean, but even if it doesn't spark, I bet it will if I put a battery charger on it. Spark! Spark. Oh yeah. Spark, 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 spark. Every time. The next step is probably the carburetor. I could dump some gas in it and hope that it just works. Ooh, I see liquid and I smell varnish. It's hard to see, you trying to shine your light in there? I want you guys to see. I'll get a better light. Do you see that orange? Chunks. Honeymoon's over. It doesn't look like it's rusted through, but it tells me that when this was put away, whoever put it away didn't plan on not starting it again for 20 years. You better clean that carburetor. Pull the carburetor off, see what that looks like. Neutral light works. What's that? I think it's the wiring for the front brake lever switch, which isn't where it belongs. See the empty hole? Yeah. The switch goes there. But at least they found a painter to fix up the bare wires. <laughs> I'll take off this cover so we can get to the carburetor. I thought of a name for the motorcycle already. Oh, what is it? I was thinking, since this engine is configured so the piston moves sideways, back and forth, mm -hmm. rather than up and down, like most motorcycles, mm -hmm. it only makes sense to call it Jorge, which of course is short for horizontal. <laughs> Jorge. Does that work for you? I will reluctantly accept that. <laughs> it looks like a Jorge. It's very cute. Okay. <laughs> so let's get this carburetor off. Ooh. Yes. The part that this cable is attached to is called a slide because it slides. Except it doesn't. This one doesn't slide. The gas must have turned to glue and stuck the slide to its bore. Maybe some of this to help free it up. 
I think I'll let that soak in for a while and take apart the air box. Wonder what the air filter looks like. Any guesses? No, because I don't even know what it is what made was of. That? Did it not just fall out? Are you eating it? Why did you just put that in your mouth? Plastic. It's like a maybe a airsoft BB or a little bead. There's another? An yeah. Did Jorge go to Mardi Gras? <laughs> So here's the air filter. It's a foam type. Looks clean and intact, but <laughs> deteriorated. Oh my. <laughs> Turned to powder. I feel lucky none of this has gotten into the engine though. So I'll have to get a new air filter. Oh, look at your, your new, your, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. You're using your new screwdriver. <laughs> now this looks like it'll come off the carburetor now. Yeah. I don't care for that smell. You're acting like you like it all sniffing it. It's an investigative sniff. It isn't a sniff for pleasure. Two volts up front, and we'll have the carburetor removed. Nuts, rather. Jorge's gonna shine up so nice. Look at this color. Raw. Me gusta mucho. All right, carburetor is off. I'll try to remove these fuel lines with my genuine Honda pliers. There, got both gas lines disconnected. The only thing holding the carburetor to the machine now is the slide that won't. It's probably smart to let the oil sit in there for a while, but I'm impatient. So I'll try to break it loose. We got things to do. That's stuck. I'm afraid I'll dent the aluminum if I pry too much. We'll let it be for now and maybe just start taking this apart right here. Well, there was more old gas in there than I thought. Don't light a cigarette. I'll keep that in mind. Ready to see what the float bowl looks like? Ugh. Do I usually do this over a pan? Oh my. That is gross. It's period correct. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to do a little cleanup and regroup. Sound good? Yes. Can't believe you just touched the camera. I need more rags or foresight. This gas smells very old. Wonder if it even burns anymore. Think it will? Yes. Barely. Now you have less rags. <laughs> All right, I've got things a little more under control now. Gas lake is cleaned up. Batteries on the charger. And the slide is still stuck. But I think maybe instead of using oil to get it free, gasoline might be a better solvent to loosen up old gasoline. Yeah. Let that sit for a minute. While we wait for the slide to get unstuck, thought I'd start working on the float bowl, which is not just the float bowl, it's also the gas valve, and I believe fuel filter over here. We've been here before, haven't we? Yes, we have. 
an old familiar place you and I face to face mm -hmm. Let's see what this fuel filter looks like Wow that good haven't seen one this crusty in a while Might be savable, might not be. A lot of it depends on if the gas that was left in here is the type that corrodes and eats away aluminum if it's left to pickle for a long time. Well, why don't you just ask it? What type of fuel are you, sir? The good or the bad? I've been working on cleaning this float bowl for about 30 minutes now. It's starting to break up, but it's very slow going. So I'll let some new gas sit in there for a little while. Does the aluminum appear to be pitted? No. The aluminum appears to be in good condition. It's just coated with crusty, sticky old gas. See these holes? Uh -huh. That's where the fuel needs to flow. <laughs> They're plugged. <laughs> you need the world's tiniest plunger. So I'm not sure what to do about that situation. Maybe this is loosened. Hope so. Verily gently put the screwdriver in there. Thought I had it for a moment. Still stuck. Maybe the last person that rode this did plan on storing it for 20 years and they were just very evil <laughs> I might have moved it I moved it okay see down in there yeah oh hey yo there it is I think we'll end the video right here, since we're on a positive note. The next time you see us, the battery will be charged. I'll have a new air filter. And this carburetor will either be a lot cleaner than it is now, or replaced with a new one. Let me know if you guys would try to save this. It's pretty crusty. Yeah, that is some serious sludge. Don't put that in your mouth. Float just came free though. Nice. Progress. Thanks a lot for the screwdrivers. Anytime. Thanks for watching.